Hi, I'm Camila Sanchez and today I'm here with Carlos. He's a music therapist and he's going to share a little bit more about his experience and how music can impact our lives. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Camila. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How That's are you? good. I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, can you share with us your background? Hmm. So I have a background uh, with music as a self-taught musician. When I was 14, mum brought a guitar to the house and I just started learning and picking it up. Um, and over the years, I developed a hobby for music and a real passion, just love for music. Um, for my own kind of personal uh, expression kind of thing. And over the years, I started playing music with people and I started performing and, and creating a bit more of a repertoire with music. and. Um, and yes, yeah, so I've, I've been doing a lot of music performance and community music um, with people in, in the communities. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And what about your music therapy career? Right, so that began in 2015. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was going through a bit of a rough uh, patch in life. I was very confused and lost. And I just met someone that had just finished the course and we talked uh, and he just really convinced me that was a good thing to try and do. And at the time I was lost, I didn't know what to do. And I, was like, I just decided to follow the call. I felt like there was something in music that was going to help me figure in. Out. You really felt I that. felt it. <laughs> it was so strong. And um, yeah, nothing. That was the answer. That was it. Feeling. The feeling, the gut feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know why, but I didn't have to. I didn't need to know. I, I knew I had to do something. And I'm very glad I did. I enrolled. Um, I qualified uh, for the enrollment and then they accepted my um, audition, I passed the audition, it was quite a process and then I had to do some papers to, um, that will help me enter the world of music therapy, like uh, some psychology and music theory and things like that. But once I had done that, I was able to start the course and I began my, my career as an academic researcher and a music therapist. And I know you um, very passionate about helping people, so maybe mm. that, happened, that that helped you to have that gut feeling, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and what was your training at uni? My training at uni began with uh, a really sort of heavy loaded content of music therapy theory, mm. music therapy um, approaches and, and um, sort of theoretical backgrounds uh, of what is music therapy, how to apply music therapy, um, and then and then sort of also developing uh, academic writing skills because the, the course uh, has two components. is the music therapy training, you're training yeah. as a music therapist, but at the same time you're training as a researcher. You have to write a thesis dissertation mm -hmm. that focuses on the work that you're doing uh, while you're working and training as a music therapist. So in my case, um, my second year of training was focused in prison, in a prison context, at a rehabilitation unit in a prison in New Zealand uh, with, with violent re-offenders that are at a high risk of uh, re-offending. Um, so the, the unit was a rehabilitation unit uh, designed with a really interesting cons um, sort of framework of community, um, a therapeutic community. So the whole unit was designed to allow therapeutic processes whilst encouraging communi communal living, communal experiences that might resemble uh, life outside prison. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and that seems to help enabling therapeutic processes. And music therapy was one of the components within mm -hmm. the whole experience um, that might help or support uh, the men that I was working with, engaging in therapeutic processes um, within within the re rehabilitation uh, program. And how music were helping them? Well, to start with, music music really enables a channel of connection with okay. people, mm -hmm. and particularly with this population group that I was working with, people were very closed up. Yeah, all of them are traumatized children. They, were, they grew up in really unfortunate situations, low socioeconomics, a lot of violence, domestic violence, alcohol and drug abuse, uh, gangs. Mm -hmm. uh, in that environment, it's very suppressive, yeah. very suppressive of, of self-expression, of emotions, of identity. So 
the men that I was working with really were drawn, mm -hmm. um, big shields in front of them. And I found the music really enables that kind of level of connection that maybe talk therapy uh, might be a bit challenging for them to, to get yeah. in there. And, and, and for them even to express and convey concepts that might be a little bit uh, strange or rare for them. Uh, even even emotions, because it, it, it has been so blocked from them for so long. Um, the yeah. music is more natural. They feel good. They can express better. Mm. And uh, yeah, the nervous system is more relaxed, maybe. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and what's your clients now? Who are you helping? Right, so at the moment, I finished my placement at the prison, I wrote my thesis, mm -hmm. published. Uh, graduated and then I started working in mental health awesome. and at, at psychiatric hospitals so still the kind of similar context where people are somehow well they're detained they're not allowed to leave because they're mentally unwell uh, in an acute setting uh, so they come to the hospital and it's a hospital says there's beds and people stay there for a week two weeks a month, two months, a year for as long as they need until they can come back to, um, you know, a manageable level of, of well-being, of mental well-being. And what do you do with them? Mm. Do you start playing um, <laughs> guitar? Or well, I do, I do all sorts of different things. So if I run a group session, um, because it's a hospital setting, people tend to be quite withdrawn yeah. and in and, and their own kind of world mm -hmm. and, you know, they all have different mental illnesses, different backgrounds. Some of them have combination of mental illness, mental illness. Um, some of them have different things going on for them. So um, my primary goal is to arrive and set up a, a session, an environment where everyone's welcome to join. And I facilitate a musical experience um, that enables connection. Enables connection, a bit of self-expression um, through music, through music that is meaningful to people. So I ask lots yeah. of questions. I want to know what is meaningful to them musically. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll, I'll choose something to do, something musical uh, that they can do. Okay. Whether it's very simple oh, so they or can not. Sing as well. they can oh, sing. yes. Oh, wow. It's, it's very Amazing. interactive. It has to be. It's not like I play music for people and people yeah, heal. Just listen. No, <laughs> that's called receptive music therapy. Is a technique of music therapy that yeah. is it's it's beneficial when people are unable to engage, mm -hmm. or you know whether they're too unwell to do anything, um, or you know or whether they have a limitation that you know is preventing them from engaging in music. Okay. And then okay, I might do something for them uh, musically. But generally speaking, is it's a facilitated musical engagement that has a therapeutic intent. So I'll know, hopefully, I'll know why they need therapy, and uh, and I'll tailor a session with activities, musical activities, that they will engage in, and to create meaning, to create connection, okay. to create a little bit of challenge, uh, to create a bit of discussion. And you need that talent to actually read your your client and uh, go slow know how to start the therapy uh, because maybe you can't really go straight away and you know that's amazing that's um it's a talent <laughs> yeah well you need to know how to read them. you need to know how to read yeah. i think that's a skill of a therapist being okay. able to to know what are the needs of the client and, how to start and the then process. what to do in order to support the needs of the clients it's not about fulfilling my own needs, it's about fulfilling the needs of them. Um, and, and, yeah. and I will ask questions and I'll try to find out what is then what is the they need mm -hmm. and maybe finding out what I could I could do to help them. Okay. Yeah. And then and then sometimes during the session I might give them some maybe some advice, some tools, some things for them to do outside therapy that might enable further therapeutic processes. And, you know, mm -hmm. you don't need to do music therapy with the music therapist all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can do a lot of things for yourself in your own time. And, and I do make sure that I put a lot of effort into, into providing 
uh, a bit of awareness and knowledge for people to, to, to take things home with them and, and keep practicing. So music therapy would be also another tool. For example, for me, if I feel, um, you know, that I have some blockage, that I feel that I need to, to express myself more, or I'm not feeling well, I'm a little bit stressed, mm. I have anxiety or mm. depression or something, music therapy could help me. I could, hey, I maybe music therapy, that it's more my way because I feel more natural, I could express myself more, I would feel more comfortable. Yeah. So that would be another tool. Yeah. yeah. So there's a website called Music Therapy New Zealand. Mm -hmm. There's a list of all music therapists, of registered music therapists, her region in the country. And that might be a good place to start. If you don't know much about music therapy or if you like to talk to a music therapist um, to learn more about it, uh, about ways of how we can help people with, uh, then that's a good place to start you can go and look it up and there's a profile for music therapists um, we all have sort of different areas of, of work mm -hmm. some people work in um, special needs education some people focused on uh, dementia care uh, some people work in mental health like myself there's different areas of work neurological music therapy is another branch community music therapy is another branch um, it's kind of yeah, the, the music therapy tree is, is, is large and has lots of branches and, and each one of those branches sort of focuses on different areas of, of, of well-being. Um, amazing. And um, what's your opinion about um, what we are listening constantly? Mm. Um, should we be more aware? Absolutely. It was one of my... One of, Find the findings in my in my research. Um, so I was working with mostly gangsters, and there's a lot of gangster rap. It's a genre of music that they'd like to listen. There's something there that made me question why and yeah. what what need is that fulfilling, and is that reinforcing something, right? Mm. So if you listen to something repetitively, that message will be repeated in your mind yeah. and perhaps some emotions will be repeatedly um, stimulated. Because your body is responding yeah. to that stimulation. Yeah, so if you yeah. feel like you're stuck in a loop and you're listening to that kind of same music and you want to change it, try changing the music you listen to. Maybe if you're really, really sad and depressed and it's, it's good to validate emotions, it's good to feel them. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you get to a point where things are getting a little bit stuck, maybe changing some things, like the music you listen to, might help um, changing your life. Your thoughts. <laughs> Why not? Your outside yeah. as well. Huh? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And how music is processed and perceived in the brain. Right. So in the brain, there's a lot of activity when we engage in music, particularly music making. Um, your temporal lobe will be firing up, you'll be hopefully remembering things through music. Music is a really good way of enabling memories. Okay. Yeah. But also cognitive, um, cognitive uh, activity, mm -hmm. so you need to think about how to play music, how to hold the drum, how to play the drum. So there's a lot of thinking to do, but that's connected with your memory. So music really enables um, a lot of brain activity with combined with body functions, memories, emotions. It's all, it's all connected there. Oh, wow. And that's a good tool to really um, feel again the emotions uh, that we were holding for so long and we don't even mm. remember. Yeah. Music is also used in neurological um, rehabilitation. There's okay. a branch of music therapy, it's called Neurologic Music Therapy. It's a special mm -hmm. training after music therapists complete their training. Um, and yes, essentially focuses on supporting brain plasticity, which is something we were talking earlier on today. Yeah. Um, stimulating brain repair through the act of playing music or engaging in a musical activity with a music therapist uh, and a specific, very specific tasks so say you have a part of the brain that is permanently damaged, um, 
there will be some techniques you can do with the music therapies that will help enabling brain function that will help repairing some of what's broken. Yeah, uh, yeah. neuroplasticity, it's um, allowing your brain to change and adapt. Um, yeah, music got a big role on this neuroplasticity thing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and what you're doing now, because I heard that you have um, a, an event tonight for the public for whoever want to experience this music therapy, music journey. Mm -hmm. um, so anybody could go to places like this, to events like this. Uh, what do we actually feel there when mm -hmm. we, you are playing? So I think it's important to make it a point of difference here that music performance or providing a musical ex experience for people to receive yeah. is not necessarily music therapy. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, it's more about music relaxation. Mm -hmm. It can be therapeutic. Sure, when we're relaxed, we're much more likely to let go of worries, to lower blood pressure, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a heartbeat. So surely it will be therapeutic. Yeah. But to call it music therapy, um, I think that might be using the term mm -hmm. in, a, in a slightly um, different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be a journey. Kind of I call it a sound there. journey. Um, it it involves sound mm -hmm. uh, that are that are produced with the help of different instruments, like um, like a concert gong, and I play it in a certain way that allows the instrument to produce. A very large bandwidth of sound with lots of very low tones or pitch, mm -hmm. very high, it's lots of harmonics, it's, quite, it's a very big wall of sound. And that can help taking the mind away from the thinking. So I facilitate mm -hmm. it, I facilitate a guided meditation where people okay. go into a state of meditation, of stillness mm -hmm. of the mind. And then as I play the sounds of these instruments, you know, we're, we're allowing relaxation to occur, but also there will be some processes that happen in the mind and the, uh, the emotional body of, of people that are participating in, in the experience. And I invite for self-reflection self -ref after that. That's amazing. So there will be, a, there will be a, a reflective process that goes through everyone's internal world mm -hmm. as they go through the journey. And then I invite reflection and maybe a sharing circle and and there will be a little bit pro a little bit of a process there that I'm interested in because as you say music can aid for relaxation and yep. where you relax you're much more likely to drop, let, go. let go of things let go of your of your boundary uh, not boundaries of, of your um, blockages. of your blockages and yeah it's yeah. awesome but it's not music therapy you see yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the music therapy is a, is a term that has been used so for... So music therapy is deeper. So you really connect with your client. It's a therapeutic practice. Yeah. Yeah. Done by... Or offered or facilitated by mm -hmm. a, registered, a registered music therapist mm -hmm. that has done a training. Yeah. Often uh, an academic training that involves this big learning this about this big body of um, evidence-based uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um and also learning about research and conducting research and, and learning how to discern inf about information. I see a lot of information that comes out um, just on social media about music mm -hmm. and sound. They're all very generalized terms that mean a lot of things. Um, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just noticing that there's a lot of, um, how do you say, there's a lot of claims that are made around the general. use. The, the, yeah, there's a lot of general claims that are made around the use of sound and healing and helping people heal whatever they need to heal. I think it's important to remark that measuring outcome with the use of music is very difficult because it's a qualitative mm -hmm. experience. So to quantify something qualitative very hard you need to be aware of all the variables and music is full of variables all the elements of music can change mm -hmm. they're very dynamic 
volume, timbre, tempo, harmony, wow, melody, all of those things can change. Yeah. And every change will create a, a different mm. effect. So to use terms like music is healing or mm. I'm a sound healer or, you know, it's, it's very broad and mm. I think it should be used with a little bit more caution. So when people use the term music therapy or, or uh, music is healing, sure, we can agree on that. Um, but if we look into the detail or into, into more it's precise information, more it's it's more difficult to to measure outcome and and, and yeah so, so to say things is easy yeah but actually to to find a specific measurable outcome uh it's very hard yeah it's a lot it's a lot going on about um healing right mm. um i'm a healer i'm a healer i do this i do but i think uh we do need professionals that really know the details, like you say, uh, because it can cause some serious effects. Yeah, that's right. And also professionals that have um, awareness of ethics, mm -hmm. of work ethics, um, of research ethics. You know, the word ethic is really important here Yeah. because um, it allows for, for safety. Mm. You can, it's easy enough to create an experience for someone to open up and have a release, you know, of something, you know, maybe a yeah. suppressed emotion or some trauma or something that is really stuck inside. You do something that happens to liberate and that's amazing. And music can do that and a facilitator can help someone have that experience. Mm -hmm. But to hold a container for what happens after, mm -hmm. for integration, uh, to help following up, to help to understand what happens for someone that is having a, a, traumatic, a traumatic release? If you don't have those tools, the tools of a therapist or a clinician, then you're potentially creating uh, more problems. possibly more problems. <laughs> yeah, That's very interesting. Uh, you need to follow up. Mm. Because, yeah, um, a lot of people that uh, look for a therapist, uh, they don't have the tools. Because if they are looking for a therapist, it's because they need help mm. and they don't have the tools and they need some, a real professional to follow up as well. Otherwise, mm. as you say, can create more problems. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to um, know and understand more about it um, and and be able to, to share this information. Um, it's a lot of natural medicine, like music. Mm -hmm. And as you said, we can be, we can do that to ourselves, listening to good, good music, music that has good repetition <laughs> in our subconsciousness, because mm -hmm. it keeps, it goes in our subconsciousness. Um, and I'm very glad that um, you went to this path and that you really love helping people and um, are happy doing this <laughs> um, yeah uh, thank you so much for all you're doing and um, I look forward to go tonight and experience this music journey <laughs> and feel and go deep within myself thank you so much and um, I see you later okay Thank <laughs> you.